So what's going on guys? My name is Chopper and I hope you guys are having a fantastic day and today's video is going to be an ultimate guide to Minecraft so you can get started and then get familiar with everything in this game. This guide is going to help you learn everything you need to know about this game. It's going to be very straightforward, very comprehensive and I hope it's something you guys can easily follow along. Now I think this video is worth watching even if you've played Minecraft before because even myself who I've played in years past getting back on and learning all the new mechanics and then getting used to the menus and stuff took me quite a while so I think even if you're familiar with this game then this video might teach you some stuff. And I worked unbelievably hard to put this video together so I hope this is something you guys enjoy if you do please make sure to leave a like rating on the video and of course subscribe if you are brand new around here for brand new Minecraft content and also Hytale when that comes out I've got some really cool stuff for this channel planned down the road so you're gonna want to make sure that you do stick around but anyways guys let's go and get to this ultimate guide for Minecraft and help you learn this game as soon as you spawn into your game you're gonna spawn somewhere in the world and you're gonna have absolutely nothing on your character except full health and then full hunger of course now what you're gonna want to do from here is find some kind of plot of land where you're going to start building or at least somewhere to get your basic needs set up. Now, I'm going to recommend that the place that you start building is somewhat near where you spawn, just because if you accidentally die, then you're not too far away from where you're already building and uh, you won't lose all your stuff. So as far as where you should start building, I'm going to recommend somewhere that has a lot of resources. This means water, trees, maybe some potential animals so you can get food, some mob spawns, of course, at night, because you're actually going to need that a little bit. And in general, I guess somewhere where you have access to everything you need that isn't too far away. So once you've figured out your plot of land that you're going to start building, then you're going to want to go find some trees and get wood. Now you're definitely going to want a little bit of wood, especially when you're starting out, because you're going to need to build a crafting table first of all, and then you're also going to probably want enough to make some sort of little structure, at least for the first night, as you're not going to have a whole lot on your hands because you only have a very limited time to start building this stuff. But once you have some wood, then you can start building your crafting table. Now this is the most fundamental item you need to build everything else in the game. So you're going to take your wood that you got from the trees, and then you're going to go ahead and build some planks. And you can do this by putting it inside the four square grid that's right by your character. And once you have all of your planks built, then you can go ahead and then put them back in that four square into a pattern that looks like this, and it should build your crafting table. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Now from here on out, as soon as you place your crafting table down on the ground somewhere, you now have access to all of the craftable items in the game, and the recipes for all these items can be found in this green book, or if you know them by heart, then you won't need the book. Now as soon as you get this crafting table built, the first item that you're going to want to build yourself, the, the very first thing you want to go for is a wooden pickaxe, and this is pretty simple to build. You're going to want to make sticks, which is very simple from your planks and then putting these together in the crafting table just like this should make yourself the wooden pick. Now this is going to be your very first starter item and it's going to help you get access to cobblestone. Now it's going to come back into play what I said at the beginning of the video of being in an area where you have access to resources and this includes some kind of cave or at least somewhere where you can get cobblestone pretty easily. Now if you cannot find it just anywhere around then you can dig straight down and you're going to find stone. But now don't be too worried about breaking this wooden pick. It's going to allow you to get yourself a pretty hefty amount of cobblestone to begin with but after this you're not going to need a wooden pick ever again. So don't be afraid to burn it all and then just, you know, get as much cobble as possible. Now, depending on where you start mining, you might run into other resources as well, like coal or iron or even some other stuff. And if that's the case, then great. But just wait, don't mind it. Just stay and wait until you make a stone pickaxe. Now, from here on out, stone picks are going to pretty much be your bulk work for mining. You make it the exact same way you just made the wooden one. And pretty much this is going to be your number one way to clear out cobblestone, especially when you're just bulk mining, because the resources for these picks are very easily replaceable. It's literally just stone and wood and and uh, you'll pretty much never run out of these things. But eventually, after you get mining enough, you are going to run into some iron ore, and the only way that this is going to be usable to you, the way to make it viable, is you're going to need a furnace, and with all the spare cobble, you can make one of these really, really quickly. So once you have that furnace, now you have access to melting these down. The furnace, just like the crafting table, is literally one of the most fundamental tools in this game, so I recommend you put it near your crafting table and likely in some kind of structure that you've already made for yourself, just to ha have it somewhere safe. The furnace is going to allow you to do literally everything from melting down ore into usable like items and then also cooking food which is going to give you much more energy than if you were to eat it raw. Sometimes when you're at this point in the game that's the only thing you have available and you got to do what you got to do. So it's not like there's never going to be a situation where you have to eat raw meat or you have to eat the rotten flesh in Minecraft but ideally you want to have it cooked because it's just going to net you a lot more energy and health. So at this point in the game it's important to protect the resources that you have and then really start to build up where you're going to be staying. Now what I recommend you do is stock up on a lot of food and then also make a ton of resources in order to build some kind of house. Like normally I just build it out of wood. It's uh, it's very mobile and you can use this for a lot of things. For example, if you have an excess amount of wood and you're using your furnace and you just don't have enough coal in the hand, you can actually burn wood. It doesn't burn nearly as well as the coal does and not for as long at all, but uh, it's still an option if you don't have any at hand. And while you're doing this, it's worth melting down all the iron ore that you have in order to get the ingots because you're going to use these a little bit later on. And for your makeshift safe house, you're just going to want to have something that's tall enough that mobs aren't going to jump in while you're doing this kind of stuff. So maybe 
three or four blocks high will be just fine. And of course, another important thing is you should definitely think about making a stone hoe in order to make an infinite source of food, essentially. Now, you're, I wouldn't waste iron on doing this because, again, these are easily replaceable. You can use wood if you really want to as well. But having a stone hoe and starting out with some wheat seeds that you can get from breaking grass is going to be really beneficial. And also something I strongly recommend is you make a bed at this point, especially if this is where you want to make your spawn point be because every time you die, instead of spawning where you, you know, were at the beginning of the game, what, as soon as you lay in your bed for the first time, this will be your new spawn point. And of course, you can only sleep at night or when it's thunderstorming and also you're, there cannot be too many enemies nearby or else you won't be able to sleep either. You can bring your bed with you if you start traveling and set up like makeshift camps. If you want to change your spawn to somewhere else and be a little bit closer to like a big mine or something, you can do that as well. Just don't take it into the nether. So when setting up your wheat farm using your stone hoe, ideally you're going to want to sort of till the ground that is touching the water because these are going to grow the fastest when you plant your seeds there. Now it's not required that you put it up against the water, but they are going to grow faster if the dirt blocks are in the water. So that's just something to keep in mind. And it can be a little bit scuffed, like just the way that you plant it, if you're going to be moving it pretty soon. But if you want to have like where you're going to be staying permanently, then you can organize it a little bit more, fence it in and have water running in between each dirt block. Like you, there's a lot of different ways you can set up that are going to yield different results. But uh, what's important here is the fact that this is going to be like an infinite resource of food that you can just make bread with. And so it just takes a little bit of time and your attention to take care of it. And uh, of course, you're not going to want to step on these blocks either as you're taking care of it, but uh, it'll be an infinite source of food and you can definitely stock up. You can use the wheat just to make ordinary items like bread, but you can also save it up and then, you know, go for other ingredients and items to make something like a cake, which is going to last a bit longer. Now, at this point in the game, with all of your basic needs set up, this is where the game starts to get really fun because now you can take it in any direction you like to. For example, this would be a good spot in the game to get bone meal from a skeleton, which is really, really easy to obtain. And then you can find a wolf out in the wild, tame it, and then it'll become your companion for as long as it's alive. There are countless animals that you can become friends with, and since I got on this game after the update, there's a bunch of new animals that I've never seen before, When that was really cool to see. The advantage to having a wolf, though, is that they'll follow you, especially when you're out in battle, and they'll attack whatever you're attacking, so they're definitely like an extra help in that regard. Or you could also take this opportunity, since maybe you don't have the biggest house and the biggest setup yet, you could basically take down everything and bring it with you, and then you could go off on your own adventure, maybe find a bigger cave to mine and go for diamonds and gold. What I typically like to do at this point in the game is just make sure that I have like a steady stream of resources coming in, you know, and that includes iron, coal, that includes food, basically everything that's going to keep you alive and keep you advancing, and then also start making moves towards getting some of the rare items in the game, like getting diamonds, and then of course obtaining obsidian. Now after getting the obsidian material, this is where the game starts to get a little bit more advanced, and at this point in the game, if you've made it this far, then you're probably already familiar with most of the mechanics, and you can pretty much run with it for yourself. And to obtain obsidian, you're going to have to do some pretty extensive mining, so you're going to want to make sure you're well prepared for this. This includes having a ton of torches, a bunch of stone and iron pickaxes, and definitely some swords and armor, which is definitely recommended. When you're trying to mine obsidian, what you're going to notice is when you first come across it, unfortunately, you are not actually able to mine this with your iron pick. You're going to require a diamond pick, and that's going to at least require you to dig far enough down where you're at diamond level, and of course, obtain enough to where you can actually build a pick itself. And so you can also make obsidian if you get a lava bucket, and then you can do it your own with water, but I find it easier just to kind of dig down for it, because it's not that hard to come across. And if you run into the situation where you haven't found diamonds by the time you come across obsidian, what I normally do is cut around where I found the obsidian, and eventually you're probably going to run into diamonds, so I wouldn't worry too much there. And of course, since diamonds are especially rare, if you do find it, you're going to want to make sure you take care of it. What's nice about this game, though, is that once you've kind of dug out far enough where you found diamonds already, it's not too hard to keep finding more. So once you initially find your first ones, and you can kind of chain off of that, then uh, you should be in good shape just to get more as well. Now, for whatever reason you are struggling to come across diamonds, no matter how much you're mining, I made a video of the top five best ways and easiest ways to find diamonds in Minecraft, so you can go check out that video if you're having problems. But if you're there long enough and you're doing everything right, then you shouldn't have any problems whatsoever. And also, you're going to run into a lot of redstone, and you can get really, really creative with this item if you so wish to, but just as a beginner and as a starter point, it's really nice to make something like a clock and also a compass for Minecraft. The compass is going to allow you to travel much further distances without getting lost, and you can safely do it basically by following wherever your house would be, and you can go off and venture wherever you want in this entire world, and then make your way back eventually using this compass. If you want to go a step farther, you can also make a map, which does require a little bit more materials, but it's definitely worth it if you want to go that route as well. And also, having a boat on hand is never a bad idea, because there sometimes are very long stretches of water that can be easily crossed using a boat, but uh, are not easily crossed any other way. But if you've done everything in this guide up to this point so far, then you should have a steady stream of resources, a bunch of excess stuff on hand, such as iron, coal, all that sort of stuff. 
stuff. And then you should have all of the basic tools you need to travel anywhere you like, and then a decent house setup as well. And from this point, you pretty much have the freedom to take the game anywhere you like to. You can take your obsidian and set up another portal and then go down that rabbit hole. And if you so wish to, you can work your way all the way up from this point on all the way to the ender dragon if you so wish to go that route. Or you can just, you know, have fun, explore, play a little bit more casual route, and just enjoy the game. Either way, this guide was set up to facilitate both styles of play. You can just have fun and just casually play the rest of the match however you like, or you can go for the ender dragon and then finish the progression of the game. Either way is going to work. But now you have the tools to go in any direction you like. So anyways, guys, that is going to be the ultimate guide to getting set up in Minecraft in 2019. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, please make sure to leave a like rating, subscribe if you are brand new, and let me know down below in the comment section if there's anything in specific you would like to see me make a video on. I'm going to have some videos about shaders and mods here pretty soon, so stick around for the exciting stuff. But I did want to get this guide out there for a lot of people who are just jumping back into Minecraft after a long time, or maybe have never played this game before and uh, are just wanting to get a grip on an understanding on everything. But let me know your guys' thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you guys for watching once again, and I'll see you all on the next stream or the next video. Take it easy, guys, and peace out.